Well, November is here, and that also means the weather patterns are definitely going to be changing. Cold, snow, activity across the country, you name it. It's not too far off here in the future as we get into the uh, second to last month of the year. Let's talk about it. Joining us now, Eric Snodgrass with Nutrient Ag Solutions for our weekly weather update Eric, how is it November already? I cannot <laughs> believe we are already here. I know, man. Um, that's what happens when you have a fast harvest, right? The time is that's flying true. by. And there. to be honest, I mean, yes, there have been weather disruptions, but we weren't talking about significant weather disruptions. Um, for yeah. the most part, we could say we got out of this harvest unscathed. Now, that's not for everybody. I get it. But uh, it's certainly... Um, for a broad, broad section. But that also means we were pretty dry and a lot of places were very dry as you came out of summer and then worked our way through September and October. But I, I'm going to be honest with you, looking at the new data we've got today and just kind of where we think things are going to go, I, I have a feeling this is going to feel like a a relatively fast start to, to winter even. Mm. Um, and uh, I'm excited for it just because it's something different to talk about. Now, I'm, 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 I want to be very careful there. We see a, a significant shift over the next three weeks. So it's like week on of warmth, then it breaks down by the end of this week into next week. And then we think it comes back on warm again. But when you get that volatility in place, it just gives you a you know a thought that something's up, something's moving around, it's going to go. But you know, it's funny, Jesse, I just want to bring this up because it, it always baffles me. And I don't know if people are just goofing around or whatever, but the misunderstanding around what it means when we in daylight saving time is hilarious. Mm. I mean, just folks like, <laughs> how do you cut an hour out of the day? I mean, the sun, and I'm like, okay, okay, just all we're doing, just shifting the clock. It's actually just, it's a, it's a way by, so we can make it safer for kids. Honestly, there's no, there's no energy savings in it. There's no, it's just the sun needs to rise early. So the kids aren't waiting out for the bus. And, 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 and that's just, you know, mm -hmm. they want to be in the dark. And so it's one part of it, but my goodness, people, I don't know if people quit thinking at some point, like, come on, it, we're not, we're not adjusting, you know, <laughs> you know, the sun's path across the sky. But anyways, we are losing daylight hours rapidly because of seasonal transition. We lost uh, for you and I, we lost about 60 to 70 minutes in October. We're going to continue to drop off as we head our way toward our next uh, big uh, celestial, you know, event, which would be the solstice. And so, um, here we go. It's time. And we've got snow. And let me give you the corridor, okay? It's not this week, all right? It's it's starting late this week into next week. The systems are going to run through the Canadian prairie. They're going to dive into the northern plains. They're going to finish to the Great Lakes and northeast. And we think that the second system, the one that's coming through Saturday, Sunday, this is a week from now, is going to have enough cold air ahead of it that it's not going to have to fight against getting rid of warm air. And we just may get some snow out of it, including some lake effect snow. So there you go. Now, remember, November and December are the big months for lake effect snow. And we need the moisture in the Northeast. We need to continue to beat against drought before we get there. We need moisture around the Great Lakes states. We need it in the Midwest and Corn Belt, too. We, we, we want to eliminate as much of the late summer and fall drought before the soils free, especially north of I-80 going forward. And don't forget these storm systems start somewhere and that's on the West coast. I've got a lot of the West coast just getting hit with, I mean, very much needed moisture for this time of year. Now that's only the, let's call it the Pacific Northwest, not the Southwest. They're not going to mm -hmm. be getting this. There's no good subtropical jet coming through, but here's what's funny, Jesse, until then, I mean, we may have on the front range tomorrow uh, and even into Wednesday temperatures like mid seventies to low eighties. Wow. And then we just get to the end of the weekend and it just comes cascading down, especially the farther east you go. So I think it's going to be just a time period of uh, making it's going to be fun to watch the temperature forecasts, but it's it maybe fun for me, not fun for everybody else. But <laughs> yeah, it's just going and it's nice. It's just something different. The pattern's starting to crank up and uh, we have something to talk about. Well, and with all of this, and if we do end up with a somewhat fast start to winter, yeah. uh, you know, having this activity is is going to be important for a lot of folks they may not love getting a bunch of snow necessarily but there's a lot of areas eric we've talked about this for weeks a lot of areas that need the moisture here yeah we do um and you know here's the thing too i, I notice i didn't give you any amounts on the snow yeah. because it, it could be just <laughs> dusting in places and somebody might get an inch or two we don't know yet but i 
I need the moisture. Uh, and I'm, I'm one of the people that does because where we are in central, the central, the northern half of Illinois, most of Indiana, pockets of Michigan, Ohio, then you come back to even, even Missouri, Iowa, Wisconsin, we, we have got to get in pockets um, a return of some soil moisture because if we don't, we're going to be dealing with this all the way till April, just because it's hard to really break a drought in those states in winter. Now, Beyond this, I looked out at the new mid-November to mid-September, excuse me, mid-November to mid-December forecasts, and holy cow, I mean, there isn't, if there's drier risks, it seems to only be maybe Sun Belt, Cotton Belt, Southeast, and, and even down there, we've seen a shift over toward a wetter than previously forecast pattern, um, and uh, so it could be very exciting start. Now, you're kind of, good question is, what, what is going on, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is kind of fun to think about. Can you just imagine that my hand right now is sitting over Indonesia? So that's here. And then Australia is to the south of it. On either side, we have trade winds coming in this direction. And normally they all go in the same. But we have what's called a negative Indian Ocean dipole. Now, this is kind of fun. We always talk about El Nino, La Nina, and it's a Pacific event when we're talking El Nino, La Nina. But there's an El Nino, La Nina-like pattern in the Indian Ocean and also in the Atlantic. So between the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic, okay, now I'm drawing this map in front of my face, so I'm seeing India here, and excuse me, in the Pacific Ocean there, the flow is just doing this. Hmm. So what happens is that traps the MJO in phase six. And we can use that to historically say, well, what happened the last time that happened or the times before that? We tended to build cold air in the Canadian prairie in December that got let out in the eastern half of the country. In fact, Rocky Mountains East. <clears throat> we tended to get early season snowpack. We tended to hit the West hard with a ton of moisture early. And the other part of this is Southern Brazil and Argentina went dry. Northern Brazil, center West went wet. And that's been a concern all along with this pattern that we were gonna see that. Now, you and I both know that the, um, you know, the Brazilian planting progress numbers have come out again. Mato Grosso is right on their five-year average. Uh, but if, if you look at it, we would say that the center West all the way over to the East Coast Brazil is going to be wet for the next 30 plus days. Uh, Southern Brazil, Argentina could struggle in this pattern to get some moisture in place. And that could become a newsworthy story over time. Mm -hmm. So Jesse, I know I haven't let you get a word in edgewise, but that's what's <laughs> floating around in my head. It's like, what, what, what's going on with this pattern right now? Well, and it's interesting to look at some of those factors, you know, halfway around the world and how it could influence, you know, maybe a, a potential La Nina pattern here and, and affects not only in the U.S. for winter, but to your point in South America, where They've made pretty good progress, but, you know, it's just a, a reminder, I think, here, Eric, that we've got a long ways to go when it comes to the South American growing season. Yeah, but, and we always have to remember they can out-acre their weather problems. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's going to be questions if they're going to do that again this year and what that could look like. Um, you know, but elsewhere around the world, I mean, I've got better moisture trying to come through the Russian wheat belt. I mean, they, they would love that. Australia is finally getting some good spring moisture, big spring thunderstorms, although there's pockets of Queens and New South Wales that are a bit drier and they're concerned about that region. Uh, and overall, I mean, where we think this lining is going to land, I think it's going to be somewhere in the week to maybe, I mean, just the first touch of a moderate category. But what I'm concerned about, Jesse, is that it peaks by, I don't know, 45 days from now, 50 days from now, mm. and starts to wiggle its way back do down toward neutral. And that is... That is a whole other signal. That could give us an entirely different second half of winter. And uh, many of us right now are not just doing this for the fun of it, but we're questioning if this winter has the legs to get cold and stay cold, which could have a huge implications on the energy markets, which is another facet of ag, right? Um, so we need to monitor this one carefully because a few things are just kind of aligning to increase that risk for having a legit cold winter. Um, because if you look back at the U.S. for the last uh, 70, 80 years, there's been about a two degree overall increase in, in temperatures in the U.S. for winter time. That means we can't get these cold events, but they just tend to be more spiked. They tend to just boom, hit, and then they revive versus, mm -hmm. you know, you can find years in the historic past where they come in and they just live. And, and so we're questioning what this winter is going to look like. And I think it's going to be a fun one to forecast. But as I've always said, stuff that's fun for me to forecast, most people hate. So 
<laughs> you judge the winter forecast based on my attitude, Jesse, and that'll be uh, that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now it's a good attitude, so it could yeah. <laughs> be an interesting winter. Yeah, folks can uh, always stay up to date. Agweather.com, ag-wx.com, and we appreciate the time. We'll talk about it each week with Eric Stodgrass from Nutrient Ag Solutions. Eric, thanks again. Have an awesome week, and we will talk to you next week. All right, sounds good.